Another factor that adds to all these weirdness and all the quirks in JavaScript is the kind of complex applications that developers are building with JavaScript today. Uh, you have code bases that span thousands and thousands of lines of code. You have code bases that are being worked on by tens of different teams across the world. And uh, the kind of complexity does take a toll on JavaScript and kind of like the language design. So if all this is such a big problem, then why do we use JavaScript? Why do we need it? Well, there's a simple answer for it because browsers support only JavaScript. So we are stuck. Given a browser, you're sending in a file which is dynamic and it needs to execute on the client side. It has to be coded in JavaScript. But there is kind of a solution for this. This kind of mirrors another problem that we've been having in computer science for a very long time, which is how to write code that gets executed in multiple different environments. That's where the concept of high-level programming languages was introduced and the concept of compilation was introduced. When you write code using something like C or Java, you don't worry about which machine it gets deployed in. You write code using the language and you go through a process of compilation which transforms the code into machine language which is apt for the kind of machine that you're executing. In the case of C and in the case of Java, of course, you got the uh, Java runtime. But the idea is you don't worry about where the application runs when you're writing code. You write code in whatever language you like, and then you go through a process of compilation where the code that you've written gets transformed into something else which addresses the problem. So compilation has been working fine for a lot of applications, right? When you run code across multiple machines, compilation is what saves the day. So can we use the concept of compilation to address this problem? If JavaScript is required, browsers need JavaScript. You send a file to a browser, that better be JavaScript. Well, we cannot avoid that. But can we do this? Can we write code in a different language? something that we are more comfortable with, something that does not have the kind of weirdness that JavaScript has, and then go through a process of compilation. The compiler takes that code that you've written, in a language that you like, and converts it to JavaScript. If you can do that, then you don't have to worry about the mess that's JavaScript. You still write code in a language of your choice, and then what you get as an end result there is JavaScript that you can deploy to browsers which understand only JavaScript, so that, that all works great. Can we do this? Well, this is kind of possible with TypeScript. Well, it's actually possible with something called WebAssembly, and that's coming. It's not there as of today, as of me recording this video. That's probably going to change in the future. But at this point, you can kind of get something like this using TypeScript, and that any language that you see over here that's actually TypeScript. You can write code using TypeScript, and you go through this process of, it's not compilation, it's called transpilation. But people call it compilation, it really doesn't matter. In this course, I'll be using those two terms interchangeably. But the idea is you write code using TypeScript, which is this new language, which doesn't have the weirdness of JavaScript, has some cool features. But then it can be compiled, it can be transpiled to JavaScript. And then you take that JavaScript and deploy it across different browsers. You get the best of both worlds, right? This is what happens with TypeScript. And this thing that converts from TypeScript to JavaScript is called the TypeScript compiler. So this is what we're going to be doing in this course. We're going to be writing code using TypeScript. We're going to install the TypeScript compiler on our machine. And then we're going to have the TypeScript compiler run and convert our TypeScript code to JavaScript code, and we'll execute the JavaScript code, right? The key thing here to remember is that the conversion from TypeScript to JavaScript happens during development time. When you're writing the code and you're executing the compiler, that's all during development time. Once the compiler executes and you get JavaScript, JavaScript is then deployed onto browsers. It's deployed on a Node.js environment or whatever. So that's the distinction that you need to remember. Now notice I said Node.js. That's very similar. A similar concept applies to Node.js too, because again, 
Node.js runtime understands only JavaScript. It doesn't understand TypeScript. So you do something very similar. You write Node.js applications using TypeScript, run it through the TypeScript compiler, you get JavaScript, and then you have JavaScript executed on the Node.js environment.